Hello Cougar football fans, Greg Rubel here with BYU head football coach Kalani Sitake and welcome to this preseason preview at Hotel Park City. We are pleased to be here at one of America's top 25 hotels as awarded by TripAdvisor's Traveler's Choice Awards in 2022. And as the Cougars 2022 training camp kicks off, Kalani, great to be with you again as we gear up for your season number seven on the BYU sidelines. Ready to roll, great to be here. Thanks, Greg. Before we talk football, uh, congratulations to you and wife Timberly on your fourth child. Uh, baby Sylvia came into the world in late July. Yeah, yeah, uh, really excited about it. I mean, she's officially two two weeks and a day old, so uh, we, you know, we're excited to welcome a newborn. And, and um, you know, it's been 12 years since we had a, a newborn in our home, so uh, I had to catch up a little bit on it. But i um, <laughs> just really thankful to my, for my wife and uh, Timberly's a trooper, man. She, she works really hard and, and uh, allows me to, to do my job. And so I'm looking forward to getting to fall camp, but excited that I have a, a newborn baby to go back home to. That's awesome. Let's uh, let's talk about 2022 and uh, big picture to start. Um, after six seasons as head coach, uh, what are you seeing as maybe some of the defining characteristics of BYU football? Well, I feel like we're in a really good spot because from the beginning, you know, you, when you're working with missionaries and yeah, uh, we obviously had to go through the COVID like everybody else had to and working through uh, all the obstacles that have been in the way. I feel like we're in a really good spot right now as far as team depth. Uh, I feel like the team culture has really taken um, taken hold and, and it's because the players are, 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 the, are the key to it. And uh, I know there's a lot of high expectations for our program and for our team, but uh, not any more than what our players expect from themselves. And that's a that's a good sign when, when um, uh, I, I mean, I think they still need me, but it's a good sign when, when I feel like the, the, the things are running really smoothly because of the leadership on the team and, and, and more, uh, more important is, is the leadership that I'm getting from our coaching staff. The fact that we're able to keep our staff together yeah. and, and uh, we have a lot of reta uh, returning production on the field, but uh, to have all the returning production in the staff room is, is really important and vital to our success. I'd like to uh, take a trip around the field uh, by position group, uh, and you can maybe give me your general vibe, a few words on, on each unit. We'll start at quarterback. Okay. Uh, Jaron Hall back as the starter, entering his fifth season with your program now. Yeah, I'm really excited about him. I, and uh, so, saw a lot of improvement, and, and he had a great year in 2021, but uh, you, even the improvement from, from the end of uh, the season to spring ball, and the things I saw from spring ball, in the off-season conditioning program in summer and um, uh, better than I've ever seen him. And so hopefully, uh, you know, we'll, we'll get through this camp and, and, and uh, see him even improve. Every day he gets better. And I know he's had a lot of mentors along the way and they've helped him get there. But his relationship with Aaron Roderick has been amazing to watch. And seeing him, uh, you know, work with the other quarterbacks in the room. Uh, and I know that they had a great uh, connection when Zach was there also. and so. Uh, this is going to be really interesting to see how this takes shape into this 2022 team, but uh, I feel really comfortable with it, with, with Jaron leading, leading the charge. All right, to running back, uh, Lopini Katoa and his 25 career touchdowns return, uh, and you bolstered the backs uh, with a pair of Pac-12 transfers, Chris Brooks and Houston Himuli. Yeah, we feel really good about the, the, the group altogether, and, and when you're adding the full backs, the big backs into the group, uh, uh, a deep group and, and versatile, versatile and being able to use more than just uh, one back at a time. Uh, uh, you mentioned Lopini, his ability to, do a, to line up a lot of different places as does uh, Mason Wake and Houston Haymouli and, and um, Chris Brooks. And so you're looking at, at the way these guys can play and the talent that they have. Uh, you mix that in with Jackson McChesney, Miles Davis and uh, Hinkley Ropati, uh, Mason Fakahua. There's a lot of guys that, that I'm pretty sure I'm forgetting somebody, but uh, we feel really good, good about the whole group and, and, and they're returning healthy, which is going to be fun. At uh, tight end, the dynamic duo of Isaac Rex and Dallin Holker both back. Uh, Rex coming off that, that serious late season injury from USC. Maybe the first question is, uh, how close is Isaac to being full go in camp? Yeah, Isaac mentally is ready to go. He, he's been, um, I, I mean, even from the injury, uh, he hasn't lost confidence and, and uh, his work ethic has allowed him to return way faster than we expected. Um, but you're watching him and, and seeing that we're going to have to just really be smart with keeping him on a, on a good pitch count, meaning that we, we've, we know what he's done in the past and what he can do. And so 
it's just a matter of, of giving other guys opportunities to get better and, and providing more depth to the tight end group, but also being smart with him. And then Dallin can make a leap too. Oh, da Dallin's looking really good. I mean, I, I don't know a lot of people that work as hard as he does. And, and um, uh, his ability to catch the ball, but also the other things that he's working on is being a complete tight end and that's blocking. But he also has a, the, the talent to, to be a stand-up receiver. I mean, he, he, he can do a lot of different things for us. And um, I, I'm really looking forward to seeing what he can do with, with a combination with Isaac and, and others that we have in that tight end room. To wide receiver, you have a top two in Puka Nakua and Gunnar Romney, and then Keanu Hill kind of leads that group of guys vying to be a solid number three for you. Yeah, we feel great about those three, and, and um, I, you know, the, the entire group, I think Fessy's done a great job um, mentoring that group, and, and uh, when they have their opportunities, they take advantage of it, and, and uh, we'll get some healthy bodies back too, and I'd like to see, uh, you know, the, the emergence of, of Chase Roberts and Cody Epps, and um, I mean, there's a lot of guys that, that you know can, can play football for us and, uh, and then have done. And, and then looking to get Braden Cosper back and he's going to be healthy. Yeah. So uh, that group can play. Um, uh, it's just a matter of, of who's going to earn all the reps and who's going to make the plays when the ball comes their way. But I feel good about any um, combination of, of, of that group on the field at the same time. The highest rated position group uh, maybe on your team is offensive line. Clark Barrington, Blake Freeland, and Connor Pay all getting preseason recognition. Other starters do return, and you add Kingsley Suomataya. Uh, it's going to be a great camp competition on the O-line. Yeah, a lot of fun. And, and, and not only that, there's five spots, and, and a good number of those guys can, can fit into the five. And, and it's finding the best five that can work together and then you know, how many do we use in the game? I think, uh, you know, I think Coach Funk and, and, and A-Rod are really excited about the possibilities there. And uh, just a lot of great talent that we're seeing from the group. And, and what I saw from spring, uh, I'm, I'm going to be really excited once we get to the, to the first game. What's reasonable to expect from Kingsley in his first year? Oh, he'll be ready to go. He, he, he's a beast. There's, there's, uh, there's, there's nothing really holding him back. It, it, and, and his... Football IQ is, is off the charts too. That, that whole group, I don't think enough. Uh, um, I don't think enough praise goes to them. I think enough praise goes to them for their abilities, but uh, the fact that these guys are all football junkies—that's the key—and and they feed off of each other and they work really well together. Um, and when you have that group that deep and with that much leadership, it, you can't help but ha see it um, kind of, you know basically leak out to everybody yeah. else. And, and uh, I'm looking forward to the, that position group specifically de leading the charge for this team. All right, that's Kalani's look at the BYU offense. Let's head to the other side of the offensive line, defensive line now. And there may be, may be almost too many names to mention when it comes to contributors because that's how you guys roll. A lot of guys play, a lot of guys are back. Yeah, and a lot of personnel groups. I mean, you're looking at a D-line group. There, there's guys that are a lot of tweeners too that can play the hybrid spots where they can play. In, outside backer stand up and uh, an end with his hand in the ground. We can even put big, big DNs on the field, which we've, we've done in the past. And so uh, when you have that group of, uh, uh, of, of players, it's just going to be just a matter of seeing what we're going to have to defend against. And, and we like to rotate guys. We want to yep. keep guys fresh. And um, uh, a lot of teams do that, you know. And, and I think that for us, when we have this much returning production, returning experience, It'd be foolish of us not to not to take advantage of everybody and to expect someone to play at a higher level than their backup uh, when their fatigue is, is ridiculous. So we're gonna we're gonna work on. I mean, our guys are in great shape, and, and if they need to go on long drives, they'll be fine. But uh, we're gonna utilize basically the the whole arsenal of D linemen that we have. Who might lead out though on D line? Do you think? Oh, Tyler Batty has to be one of the leaders for us, and and we get you know. Uh, Lorenzo will be back and, and leading for us as well, and he had some injuries from last year. But uh, I think those, when you're looking at the the, the seniors, uh, Earl Mariner and um, uh, Caden Hawes, there's the guys that have played a lot of a lot of games, and Gabe Summers. I mean, the, the, the whole group, they they can lead us up, but they, usually Tyler's the, the the more vocal one out of the group. And but the rest of the group, they they lead by example, and if you just follow the guy in front of you, the, the young guy should be just fine. Linebacker, another highly rated unit for BYU nationally. Uh, getting Keenan Peely and uh, Peyton Wilgar back from, uh, from injury will be huge. 
and it was a big season and off season for uh, for Ben Bywater too. Yeah, Ben Bywater took a, took advantage of the the reps, and and it was unfortunate to have injuries happen to Peyton Wilgar and Keenan Peely, but uh, Ben took advantage of that time, and, and I felt like he and Max Tooley really stepped up and became big time players. Um, Looking forward to getting Chaz IU healthy as well. He plays a hybrid position between safety and, and, and backer for us. As, uh, and, and, and we feel like a, there's some good depth there. Jackson Kafusi provides that for us. Uh, you know, we have uh, Kavika Gagne that can play there, Morgan Piper, uh, Josh Wilson. There's a, a good group of those guys that are there. And then there's a, a good group of return missionary freshmen that are going to be uh, adding to the depth for our team there at linebacker. And, we feel really good about that group, but but definitely led by Keenan, Peyton, and Ben. To the secondary now, a lot of starting reps return. D'Angelo Mandel, Kayla Hayes, Malik Moore, uh, Jacob Robinson, Ammon Hanneman. And then you add uh, Gabe Judy Lally from Vanderbilt. You talk about competition in camp, you'll have a lot of it there too. It's a good group. Yeah, and we're gonna need we're gonna need more than just the the four DBs on the on the field, you know, at, at corner and safety. But uh, it, it helps to have guys that the, with Gabe's background that he's played in the SEC and and started a lot of games and won against great competition. So I, I think he'll be primed and ready to go, and he'll be joining a great group that uh, you know Coach Guilford is going to have that, that group ready to roll. And, and and we added a bunch of speed with the freshmen that are coming in, and and um, I, I think uh, I think that's one of our deeper groups that people aren't talking about, but. Uh, hopefully you're not talking about the corners too much. That, that, yeah. that usually means a, a good things are happening if you're not mentioning the play of the corners. And, and uh, but you know we'd like to see them take a step uh, forward and, and get some interceptions and, and help our team score more points on the defensive end. What are your expectations now? We'll back it up to offense for a second. Um, the way that uh, A. Rod's got this thing, you know, kind of rolling and moving with a returning starting quarterback. What's going to be a good year for BYU offensively this year? Well, I think offensively, it's, it's just allowing A-Rod and, and Fessy and that staff to just uh, f feel free to be aggressive and uh, to do whatever it takes to put as many points on the board. You know, I, I've been known to let them roll, and, and uh, you know, I think fourth down's a good down for us to utilize that, but I'd like to win more first and second downs and, and uh, get more points on the board. So, And then the key is to getting them on the, on the field and getting them as many reps as we can. And, uh, I like the, the style of play that we have. We, we've shown that we can be explosive on the field during the game, but at the, at the thing that I like the most is that how we can end the game and run the clock out and, and punish people with the run game. Uh, that's been really impressive for, for me to see as a head coach that, that our offense can do. I think a lot of times people look at the big play production, mm -hmm. which is great, but then I think you look at the kind of the, um, the identity of our team is that we can do a lot of different things. and we kind of lean towards a little bit of the, the, the tough and rugged part, especially following that O-line. With as many players back on defense, what are your expectations uh, for the performance of the BYU defense in 2022? Yeah, I mean, I, I think at the beginning of the year in 21, we, you saw a lot of what we could do when, when we had our, our, full, our full team. And, uh, you know, the injury started to happen, especially when, when Keenan Ellis went down. That was tough in the Arizona game. And um, it's good to have him as, as, a, as a student coach for us, but uh, that hurt us. We, we started to lose players and started to lose some leaders, and, and uh, it, it definitely changed the way that we had to call the game. And um, the, I think every team has to deal with that. The injuries could happen, but I was pleased with the guys that stepped in and played and, and took advantage of their reps. Um, the, the silver lining is that uh, we get a lot of guys back that are healthy, and a lot of the guys that had their first time Opportunities to play guys like um, that that made significant strides like Ben Bywater and Max Tooley. Now those guys are 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 are, are, are experienced and and um, veterans, and so uh, we go into this season with a lot more of a veteran group. And uh, if if injuries do happen, then I think we'll be in a, in a better spot, even to do some things differently defensively that we uh, didn't really have the comforts of doing last year. Let's hit on special teams for a moment because uh, when your punter and your place kicker, that's Ryan Rico and Jacob Oldroyd, when they're up for the Ray Guy and Luke Groza Awards in the preseason, you're in pretty good shape. Yeah, I mean, I've, we feel really good about, about those two and, and, and feel good about our snappers too. You know, I, I think um, looking at, at Austin Riggs and, and Britt Hogan done a great job for us at, at, at snapping the ball. But um, Rico, I think he would probably be more known if we didn't um, – 
We if you punted more. Yeah, we didn't punt <laughs> enough. I, I know that he will, he will, didn't qualify for some uh, some awards because he didn't have enough punts. Uh, I, I hope that doesn't change. You know, right. I, I, I don't <laughs> mind. I mean, the fact that he's being recognized for some awards now, preseason, is a good sign. I think people know. They, if you watch him, they, they recognize that he he does have a very powerful leg, and he, he can. I mean, he's, he he has a, a lot of different ways to to punt the ball, but he's also a very solid holder, and he's a good place kicker as well. And and uh, when talking about place kicker, I think Jake's done an amazing job for us. Um, the, the, the key is keeping him healthy and allowing him to just just kick the ball for us. And we we want to kick as many PATs you know as we can, more than field goals. And we don't really want to punt that much. But when we do, we know that Rico can pin him deep and um, and put us in a good spot. I mean, he's got a very strong leg, but I feel I feel really good about having the, the, those two returning. And, and I also feel good about the guys behind him that have had opportunities to kick. Uh, so I, I feel like that's a good spot going into the season, um, especially solidifying the, the, two, the two spots of punting and place kicking. We'll see who emerges as a kickoff returner. Uh, Hobbs Nyberg, though, I think has an inside track at punt return, right? He does, and, and, and he tracks the ball really well. I mean, he's, he's an outfielder from baseball, and so uh, and he made some really good decisions, you know. So that's always that's one of the toughest spots uh, to, to play. Um, and so we're, we're looking forward to him maybe stepping it up a little bit and trying to give him more opportunities to, to get some returns. But um, the, the best thing that he does is secure the ball and secure the, the possession for us on offense. Uh, we'll see. We'll, we'll give some other guys some chances in, in, in the return game. But um, you know, kick return, we're looking to, to see if there's anybody that can really uh, explode for us on that, on, on that part. But um, in, we want to get the ball to our offense. But if there's a way that we can increase our chances of scoring by getting better field position with returns, uh, then we're, we're open to, to see who can do it. And th there's good competition, there's a bunch of guys that I think could really fit into the mix. All right, that's a look at BYU football position by position in part one of our preseason preview here at Hotel Park City, where you'll find world-class accommodations, Ruth's Chris Steakhouse, a full-service spa, and of course, a great golf course in amazing surroundings. In part two of our preview, I'll chat with Kalani about his coaching staff, the 2022 schedule, the landscape of college football, and transitioning into the Big 12. Until then, go Cougs. <laughs>